So I have been so busy with this thing. It is crazy. I haven't been doing much filming, but I'll explain everything I've done. So the first thing we've done with this is get the pulleys going on. Every single pulley is working now. We bought three quarter inch pulleys and just put a nut and bolt and, and uh, they work just like the old ones. So hopefully that all works out and if we need to change them, it would be really easy to change them if we need something else to do. But, so now we're uh, working on the floor here. We got 26 gauge metal, four by eight sheets. And I cut them to the size of the floor right here. And the size of the floor is 79 and a half inches. So there's three sheets here. I'm gonna cut them. Or I did cut them and then I got to cut out the wheel wells still, and then I have to cut this end one still. But I'm gonna do that when I get the plywood all cut. And then up here, the hitch, I have to re-bolt this because the bolts, or one of the bolts was sheared off when I was tightening it. So I have to, or I got new bolts from TSC, tractor supply and grade eight, strongest bolt, out there and I'm gonna put this all back together so here's the floor 5 8 plywood cutting it at 79 and a half putting the metal down first on the frame how it is now and the wood on top of that but we just gotta cut this and then we'll be screwing the floor down well first I gotta cut out the wheel wells and cut them all the size and then we'll be screwing it down all right guys so I just finished the hitch here. It's a little dirty, I'm only cutting all the wood, but. So, this hitch is separate. I showed you guys. So, that is because when they had the hydraulic brakes, this would slide back and forth, activating the master cylinder, and so on. So, now all I did was take this bar, connect the bottom and the top so it won't shift it back and forth, and use the grade eight bolts to secure that in place. There she is. So I'm getting the floor on here. I'm getting real excited. Actually looks really good. And uh it's been going on a lot easier than I thought. We have been using these Tex self-drilling screws to go through the, through the wood and then through the frame. It's got this self-drilling um, tip on it. Goes through the wood, through the metal that we put underneath, and then through the frame. Real easy. Best screws for the job. And so we just marked out where all the where all the frame is on you know, on the wood chalk line and pencil screwed her down every about a foot apart and this thing is solid it is not spongy like the old camper was the old camper floor ended up cutting out the wheel wells all i had to do was just take the i had a old template from the original floor that i used cut it out looks perfect and all i gotta do is just screw her down and yeah, that's what we've been doing. And I taped the joints of the metal underneath so no water or anything gets up in there. And uh, we use duct tape and then this water seal tape. But yeah, it's, it's been going great. All I gotta do is cut this last piece of plywood right here, screw that down and then the floor is done. And then I will show you guys what I'm doing with the frame pieces, the wall frames. So we got all the floor on. It looks so good. I'm so happy I got it on. The metal underneath it. 
it turned out exactly how I wanted it to. So sturdy. We ended up using a hundred of these screws, and then I took a few out of this pack. So I used a little over a hundred screws on this on this thing. I didn't think I was gonna use that much, but good thing I got that second pack because I really needed them. But it is so crisp to stand on and it feels good to finally stand on it again. Alright, so since we got a floor on, I have been building the end walls here. So, what I did was I literally made a cardboard template, cut off the end of the old wall, traced it on the cardboard, cut it out, and then I put the template on the new plywood sheet and traced it on there and then cut it out. And this came out perfect. Really is not hard at all. Just take a skill saw, cut all these rounded edges. Real easy, two screws each, each one and glued it. Same with the back here. It was kind of weird how they did the back here because they had that, there's like a U channel up top here where the tops of these middle supports are like, they're able to flex back and forth and such. I don't know why they did that, but I just decided to keep it original, how they made it. So pretty much all I did was draw temples and templates and trace them out on the new wood and cut it out. Pretty easy and then there's only two one by one and a half strips of wood for the top and bottom for both here. Here's uh, one set of the templates. I'm pretty sure this is the front end caps here. Right here and on the other side. And this is um, the middle of the back here because there is a difference on how they're cut because this one has that little thing that comes off the top and then these don't because that's where you attach them so this is what I did I just cut these out traced them on the old plywood or the new plywood and cut it out and it turned out pretty good Alright guys, so I got the walls on and the lift arms as well. Very simple. I didn't even record or take any pictures of me doing the walls because they were so easy. All it is is that one by one and a half strips of wood. And I just duplicated the old walls. And this is how it turned out. So I think it looks pretty darn good. My next step is to put the plywood, the quarter inch plywood on the outside. I got the quarter inch Luan plywood. It was pretty cheap and pretty, I mean, can't go wrong with it, so. The rest of the floor is on and everything, so we ended up sanding the seams of the floor because they were a little bit raised, so that made it all flat. So we won't have a problem putting the new flooring on and there's the new door frame so we're getting there here we go guys i got all the plywood on the outside on both sides looks pretty darn good wasn't that hard to put on honestly it was just had to take the time to do it had to splice little areas up here and then had to put some cross pieces where they join together, screw them together. Made it stronger. I only took two sheets of quarter inch Luan plywood to the door right there. And then I used cool, um, one and a quarter inch screws and then I use liquid nails glued it screwed it and it's 
turned out really good. All right, so I got house wrap to put on the outside of this to protect it in case any water gets in. Hopefully that'll protect the wood a little bit more. And then I also put cardboard on the front and it turned out pretty good. So the front is ready for the metal to be put on. And I'm also working on the metal, put the JB weld or out there's some holes and some rips were. So just working on that right now. This one's drying, there's a big rip right here. I'm trying to repair it. And I still gotta cut out holes in the back here, so that's why I didn't do the back yet. So here's the back panel. There's three emblems on the entire camper in back and the two sides, just like that. So I took painter's tape, taped it around it. These were originally black, with, and then I the letters were white, so that's why I taped it. So I'm gonna paint this black and then paint this back, but this is how rough the back was. It's ready. All I gotta do is wash her up real quick and let her dry and paint her. But first I'm gonna do this black on all the emblems. All right guys, so starting to put the outside metal back on, getting real excited. I've got this section done right here. Looks real good. Got a little mess up right there, so I'll have to fix that, paint it again. Put this pipe in where it was on the old one and then they did not have like reinforcement on the back side for the spare tire mount. So now that's gonna be really sturdy because last time it was just wobbling all over the back. So it'll be really sturdy with this extra reinforcement I put on there. So we're, we're getting down to the nitty gritty on the outside here. This is how the emblems turned out. I hand painted white inside. The letters are hand painted and on the outside I spray painted it like I showed you guys before. And then I had a little mistakes from the white so I had to go back over with the black and just sprayed some spray paint in like a old water bottle bottom and uh, hand painted it, all the mess ups I had. But it turned out really good. Just got the front done. Looks really sharp. Here's the other emblem here. Uh, and the one on the back is still trying to, so. I uh, will keep showing you guys the progress, but it's coming out really, really nice. So I finally got all the siding on the outside here. All done. I'll paint it up. So I use that gloss almond paint that I showed you guys in the making the top video. And uh, use that, put a couple coats on, and then I put a clear coat on. This is how she turned out. So I just tacked it with little nails. And then from the bottom, there's sheet metal. There's three quarter inch sheet metal zip screws to hold it all on, and then staples for each piece that goes on. So not too difficult. It was just took a lot of time painting. This paint is just like a spray paint black. I put clear over. It turned out pretty good. So next, I'm gonna be putting on the lights. I already got one on so far. Turned out really good. Original light, incandescent light bulb in there. 